Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. In this video, I'd like to talk about the new tier 95 weapons and why I believe they are somewhat underwhelming. So whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. The tier 95 melee weapons are known as the Dark Shard of Ling and the Dark Silver of Ling. Currently, this weapon set is hovering around 3 to 3.1 billion GP, which will obviously decrease slowly over time. Let's start by comparing these weapons to the tier 92 and tier 90 counterparts, being the upgraded Kopesh set and Draugr weapons. As you can clearly see, the accuracy of the tier 95s are actually a lot higher than the Kopeshes or Draugrs, so much so that there's a 12.49% difference when comparing the tier 95 set to Draugr weapons. And when compared to Kopeshes, you have 7.3% more accuracy. This is substantial and would be extremely useful for bosses where you don't have 100% hit chance, for example at Varango, Talos, Yakumaru, the Magister, and Araxor. It is worth noting that if you include your skill bonus, which in my case is 1212 while wearing nothing, the accuracy increase seems to become lower in terms of percentages, but it's still 8.37% when comparing the tier 95 to the tier 90s. That extra accuracy in itself would increase your damage as you would not be missing your hits as much. However, this isn't something I can simply quantify for you. I can however tell you how much raw damage you will gain from doing absolutely nothing other than simply using these weapons over tier 92s or tier 90s. If we take the stats in the equipment setup, the damage difference between the tier 95s and a tier 90 weapon is a raw 4.28% damage increase. When comparing them to Kopesh's, it's a 2.51% increase. 4.28% is a massive difference. If we take unaugmented weapons versus weapons with precise 6 equilibrium 4, the damage increase is around 7.1%. So getting over half that by simply increasing the tier of your weapon is pretty crazy. And that's assuming you have 100% accuracy. Now, I did test this using some abilities, including server and slice, and the numbers were really similar. If you're wondering why the hits are so low, by the way, it's because I wasn't using any boosts. I was simply using the abilities to see what percentage increase I would get. And the numbers were really similar. Now let's talk a little bit about the passive of this weapon set, including the tier 85s, because the passive works on the tier 85s as well. The passive of this weapon allows you to use destroy and hurricane as they no longer share a cooldown. The normal cooldown of hurricane if you use destroy is 20.4 seconds. Now this passive is actually really good and allows for more damage output in a shorter period of time. And it's honestly something that makes this weapon quite nice as you need to switch less. That being said, said, if you want to use Quake, you'd still have to switch to a two-handed weapon, and if you want to use Cleave, of course, same thing. But yeah, the passive is really good. The special attack, however, is not, and this is exclusive to the tier 95 set. The special attack is known as Icy Tempest, which costs 20% adrenaline and has a 60 second cooldown. When used, your damage cap is increased by a flat 30% for 30 seconds. With a Grimoire Smoke Cloud, you would theoretically be able to hit 20,436. However, this proves very difficult. And, if you aren't using a Grimoire, just simply getting high hits is almost impossible, unless you stack damage buffs, or you do a boss where you can use massive damage boosts, like Tarakette or Raksha. And when I say the spec is mediocre, I honestly mean it's garbage, unless used in the right situations with many stacked damage buffs. For example, I did a Zerk rotation using an Elder Overload, Turmoil, Zerk Aura, Smoke Cloud, Ripper Demon, and Vulnerability. The amount of extra damage I dealt was laughable. Just look at those numbers on the screen. That is laughable. That's actually so bad. And the problem is it feels pretty clunky to have to use this spec before you Zerk as well. At least in my opinion, it just doesn't feel very nice to have to spec, move away, use your defensive, then Zerk, barge in, and do your thing. But if I were to gain, let's say, 5% more damage on my abilities, I probably would use this spec. But right now, it just doesn't seem worth it for me. To get a better view of the difference, have a look at this sheet made by GameDolf from the PVME Discord. Now, I'm aware that there isn't much context to this sheet, but it does give you a good idea. It is worth noting he was using slightly more buffs than I was. Now, let's have a look at a sheet using the Dragon Battle Axe spec and also using the Salve Amulet E, so what you would gain by using these weapons in the spec at Tarakat, excluding the Undead Slayer sigil. As you can see, the damage values are actually pretty good here. 
But that's one of very few bosses. Well, maybe Rise of the Six as well, but most of the time you won't be getting much out of this spec. And that is the problem with this spec. The most you'll get out of this spec is by using special attacks in your Essence of Finality and your Flanking Switch. Most notably, the Dragon Longsword and VLS or Vesta's Longsword are really good in Essence of Finality using this spec. Now, does this mean that you shouldn't be using these weapons or you shouldn't be interested in these weapons? Well, no, but the spec simply isn't as powerful as, let's say, the Fractured Staff of Armadil or the Eldritch Crossbow. But having 295 damage is still better than not having 295 damage, so they are worth getting, but are probably a little later down the upgrade order. Just like Kopesh is war, basically. But this time you have a spec, instead of just having a tiny increase in damage. And don't forget the accuracy is going to be quite nice for some bosses. So yeah, this weapon is a worthy upgrade and will be better than Kopesh's. Although I don't think it's worth getting until late game. It's also worth noting it makes your rotation slightly more complex, with almost no return unless you have those stacked damage buffs. Another annoyance is that you cannot spam the spec like you can with ECB, so you can't keep it up at all times. Not sure why that's the case, because it isn't as powerful as an ECB, but it is what it is. Also, you can't switch to a different weapon, because if you do, the spec disappears. And I think they did this so that you cannot actually use this spec when using ranged or magic, but that's just my guess. I personally think they should have given this like a flat damage buff to your melee attacks instead of increasing the cap, or perhaps give you adrenaline gain because that's something melee is really slacking with right now compared to ranged and magic. I mean, you can always just switch to Hydrix Bolts using melee to gain your adrenaline, but that's, you know, not ideal. So apart from the looks, I wouldn't say these weapons are too exciting for melee, but if you're a max best in slot melee player, you can probably have a little bit of fun with these at certain bosses. Shout out to Jaces for borrowing me these weapons, as I wouldn't have been able to get them without him. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it interesting. If you did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.